Volkswagen has essentially made a retro classic version of their old T2, but without an engine. This is Volkswagen's new electric ID Buzz style edition, the spiritual successor to their famous and iconic Type 2 minibus. It shares quite a few features of its grandfather, including this massive logo on the front, but is it any good? Let's find out. This is the Volkswagen ID Buzz in the style trim with the two-tone paint. Now, this is what you get when the grandkid of the original Type 2 has an offspring with an e-Golf or an ID3 or 4. That means you get a stylish, everyday car with the capability of something you could take overland, move house with, perhaps even live in. And with a starting price of £58,915 for the base life trim, you might just have to. Whichever trim you choose, you're going to still get the 77 kilowatt hour battery driving a single rear 204 horsepower electric motor. All trims come with a rear view camera, four USB charging sockets in the rear, their special Discover Pro navigation system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, the 10 color ambient lighting, Heated steering wheel, heated seats, heated windshield, all that sort of stuff. But the style adds these 20 inch alloy wheels, uh, increases the colors to 30, so you can have even more complex interior color arrangements. It gives you the power tailgate, so that nice easy opening and closing. Uh, the super, super clever uh, beams, which I'll come to in a minute. Uh, the IQ light, which is the uh, LED matrix headlamps with automatic headlight control, poor weather light, which are fog lights and entry lighting. Uh, illuminated mouldings and the steering wheel dashboard and central consoles also come in electric white. The ID Buzz is taller than an SUV and the side doors are so much more practical. These big sliding doors make entry really easy, especially in tight parking spaces. The seats inside have got tons of room, tons of headroom and they're really, really comfortable. I've had to do a little bit of software consultancy, which is actually my day job while making this video. The ID Buzz made that very easy. It actually makes a really convenient place to have quick meetings in the back of the car. So I can do, put you on the tray table over there and have a quick meeting on my phone. Oh, hello, one second. Now that's over, we can get back to the driving dynamics. Look at this turning circle, it's 11 meters, which by the way, is the same as a VW Golf. It's quite impressive because the wheels are right at the edge and there's a short overhang. So it's a vehicle you can just enjoy, literally. You can go anywhere. You can carry your family and probably their family as well. And all of their stuff and their dogs and all their dog toys and just pack it all in and go on an adventure like a giant electrified snail. You might have noticed I haven't talked about competitors and rivals. That's because this car doesn't really have any. This boot has a massive 1,121 litres of storage space, and that can be expanded to 2,205 litres with the seats down, not to mention space on top for mounting stuff too. Tons of space, flat loading, and nice and easy to access as well. Plus, if you want a tow bar, you can tow up to a thousand kilos with this handy tow bar, which stows away. This EV can tow 750 kilos unbraked and a thousand kilos braked. Passengers in the rear can move their seats forward and backwards, depending on how much stuff you're carrying in the boot. You've got these tray tables, the usual document holders, a little place for your, for your phone. You've got USB charging as well and you've got tons and tons of headroom and space around you. Places to stow things, water bottles, food, snacks, whatever. Everyone gets a USB-C port and a place to store their devices. And in fact, let's talk about those because there are eight of them in this cabin, eight USB-C ports for passengers and the driver. We've got stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff. <laughs> this is what it's like making a <laughs> sort of feature film. <laughs> so you can uh, compress down here 
and actually pull this whole thing out. So you don't actually even need to have it. So you can have, here we go, look, I'll just move it. This just, this just free space in here. Do you know what I mean? So you can kind of, you can turn around. Here we go, this is an annoying thing, right? So every single time you turn around, talk to your passengers or whatever, you get this. You know? You get the welcome sound. The welcome sound happens when it... I only had this ID Buzz style for a week and I can already feel myself falling in love with it. It is the fantastic all-round vehicle. It is nearly perfect. It will do everything you could possibly want it to do. Carry stuff? Check. Go on adventures? Check. Charge all your devices? Keep your kids entertained? Perfect for that. The car just makes you want to smile. I've had so many compliments in the past week, more attention for this car than even the Mercedes from my previous week's video. Look at all the tiny little attention to detail here, little picture of a mini buzz, and then we've got smiling faces in the door handles, one on the windscreen and so on. It's a car that I think VW want you to smile in. The car says goodbye to you when you leave and welcomes you when you arrive with its automatic unlock. Automatic unlock. What's it like being on the inside of the ID Buzz? Is it like a van? No, not at all. The refinement is excellent. This cabin is really well insulated from road and wind noise. Here I am driving along about 40 miles an hour. You can hardly hear anything. This is absolutely excellent. It's right up there with Mercedes, BMW and Audi's level of comfort and refinement. These comfort seats though, really, really nice. So they're not leather, they're a kind of eco suede. Just like the uh, synthetic leather steering wheel, these seats are really, really comfortable. There's loads of adjustment, as you would expect, and these arms, which can be adjusted exactly to where you want, like literally infinite adjustment of these arms. Now, even though we're looking at over 10 seconds, 0 to 60 time, the van is really nippy, thanks to its electric motor. There's no waiting for the chemical reaction to happen under the boot, the fuel pumps, etc., etc. You've heard this all before. So, if we accelerate here from 40 miles an hour, or 50, oh, Four to the pedal, here we go, 60 miles an hour. That's the sort of performance you can expect going up hill. That's the reason. Now we do have a few extra little modes here on this infotainment system. On mode here we have comfort mode, eco mode, sport mode, and individual, which is a bit of a mashup of all of the above. You can kind of customize how you want the handling to be and so on. There's actually not a great deal of difference between these modes I found, but if you pop it into sport mode, you do get a slightly better response on the steering wheel, slightly better response on the pedals, but again, we're, we're, we're just sort of working around the edges there. At the end of the day, it's a large vehicle with one motor. The car has a dedicated small screen for a dashboard that you can view just through the steering wheel. And you can control what sort of card you see by sliding along on the right hand side here. Now, I found that the controls on the steering wheel I really didn't like them. They were far too sensitive. You do get a nice haptic feedback when you, so you know you've moved something or touched something, but they're really easy to brush by accident or when you're turning the wheel you may, during a parking maneuver or similar. I'd quite like these to just be normal buttons or perhaps just simplified a little bit. So in terms of efficiency, I've been getting about three miles per kilowatt hour during my tests, which have involved driving up and down hills and trying out all the car's features. I'm sure you could probably do better if you weren't me and you had the car for longer. So you can charge at home at seven kilowatt. You can charge from public 22 kilowatt three phase at 11 kilowatt, thanks to the car's oversized DC to AC inverter. So what's really nice about this car, especially on a pissing, pissing wet day, is under here, you've got your own canopy. So it's nice. Nice and dry. Right, here we go. We've got one of these. One end goes in one end, one end goes in the other end. So here we go. Oh, hot point. My name is Katie Iris. Here we go. And you can charge from public rapid charging, if the public rapid charger is fast enough, at 170 kilowatt. These are peak rates, so your mileage will literally vary, but this is a good, decent amount of speed for a car like this. Take this off here, this port, and then right in here we have CCS.
for those who haven't seen this and my current car doesn't have them but these are matrix headlights so you know when you have full beam on and you have to turn them off when someone's coming the other way in case you blind them well with this car you don't you just leave your full beam on all the time at night and what it will do is it will intelligently cut out the small part of the beam that the other cars or other people are in and it's really really clever and it's such an important safety feature i think for driving at night i mean check this out look my full beam's on and look it just fills it back in when the car goes incredible it's literally like magic what's less magical is the infotainment i mean for a car that's aimed at people who are doing lifestyle stuff the screen was kind of small for me and didn't have netflix youtube web browser that sort of stuff and it had quite a low refresh rate so it felt kind of awkward and clunky to use uh, a couple of times i'd end up with bits of ui elements overlapping each other you do have a saving grace here in that you don't actually need to use it that often really and you can always use apple carplay or android auto the other thing is the touch sensitive buttons for climate again kind of finickety a bit like the steering wheel these are just the areas that i think vw should work on perhaps for the next cars and then they'll be nearly perfect uh, it needs a front camera no question thanks very much Ah, perfect. Sorry. Can Thank you wait in there? Back if you want. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Look, don't judge me. I've got a car here that's taller than the drive through window and it's got a tray table. <laughs> because I can't say this confidently enough. This car is absolutely lovely. And everyone I showed it to, and there were quite a few of you over the week, and you know who you are, really enjoyed it and loved it too. There is something very easy to like about this vehicle. Okay, so here's my advice. If you're about to spend 50 or 60K on a ubiquitous Samy SUV or crossover that everyone else is driving, uh, go to your nearest car dealership and test drive the ID Buzz. It's great for everyday use. It's much more charming than an everyday SUV with more space to boot. This is a really easy vehicle to live with day to day. And for that, I can recommend it. This video would not be possible without the kind loaner of the ID Buzz from Jackson's Motor Mall for a week. Listen, they haven't seen this video before I publish it. I'm literally editing it now and I'll upload it at one o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday morning uh, without running it past them first. They haven't asked me to say anything about the car except to say that it came from them. So thank you so much to Jackson's Motor Mall again. Thank you to the lovely diving developer community, especially in the comments below for supporting the channel. Smash that like button and I'll see you all again in the next video.